Hi there. So in this lesson, things are going to get interesting. We're actually going to connect to a database to load data into R. Previously, we've been working with some local files like CSV files and Excel files, including a couple of interesting scenarios. And often you're going to have to do that. You're going to get data in those formats, so you're just going to have to work with that. But where things get a little bit more interesting is connecting to databases. And there is a slightly different methodology to uh, connect to this uh, database and then get the results out of it. So the first example of connection to a database I'm going to show is a SQLite library. And then in the next video, we'll use another database such as MySQL. It's just a couple of setup points. So the libraries that I'm going to be using include R SQLite and uh, DBI. So if you don't have these libraries, please go ahead and install them. And then let's make a connection to the database. Another point, the database is stored in this Airbnb.sqlite file. So uh, this will be part of the data folder that you'll have, and we're going to connect to it. Now, within that Airbnb database, we just have one single table where we have that Airbnb data. So the name of that file is appropriately called Airbnb data underscore data. So let's just get started. What I've done is outline some steps that we're going to be following. And regardless of whether you're working with a SQLite library or MySQL, Postgres, whatever is the different type of system you're using, you're going to be following some steps which are going to look pretty similar. So really like focus and learn what you're doing here. And then it's going to help you uh, in the future. First thing we're going to do is connect to the database. So here I'm going to basically call um, a variable called connection. I'm going to assign to this variable called connection. And we're going to use the DBI library. There's a function within that called DBI connect. And we need to specify for SQLite just a couple of things here. So we need to specify the driver, which is just going to be SQLite. So I'm just going to hit tab here. and we're going to have this function here. So make sure that you, you see these parentheses at the end of it. And then the other thing I need to specify here is the name of our database. So I'm going to say here DB name is equal to and we need to specify exactly where this is located. So it's in our data folder. And I'm just going to hit tab here. And I'm just going to go ahead and hit tab again. So what this will do is let us connect to that database. And next up we need to get a specific table out of it, which in our case is just one table. So I'm just going to first of all, just execute this chunk and see what happens. So here what we have is this uh, connection, which is a formal class of SQLite connection. So we're going to use this and get the data out of SQLite. So to get the results from the database, we can use this function from deployer called table. And in here, I need to specify a couple of things. So I need to go ahead and specify the connection that I'm using, which in this case is to SQLite. Uh, if it was uh, MySQL or uh, Postgres, then it would be a connection for those uh, databases. We'll see later those ones. And then next up, I'm just going to specify here the name of my table, which is Airbnb underscore data. And once I do that, I'm going to also pipe this in to a function called collect, which is going to help us get the results. And I'm going to assign this to a variable called data. You don't want to be connected to the database all day. So just make sure to disconnect. And for this, we're going to use this function called db disconnect. And I'm going to specify the connection here as well. In the end, what we can do is just preview our results and make sure that everything looks correct. So I already ran this uh, code up here. So I'm just going to run this one. I'm going to run this one. And I'm going to preview the data. So now we're back in familiar territory. We have approximately 49,000 rows, 16 columns, and uh, things are looking good. So as you saw, this wasn't much different than what we've done previously. But make sure to understand kind of the, the process, and then you'll be able to replicate this in, uh, in a uh, professional setting where you'll have access to different types of database systems. Uh, so I appreciate you for joining me, and I will see you next time. Thank you.